Hi and welcome to our video blog. This is Ash and with me is Jude. Hi. Hi Jude. Hi. How are you? Fine. We'll uh, start off with our updates. Yeah, I have some news for you guys today that uh, will make every Indian proud. The nuclear submarine INS Arihans was launched yesterday. India on Sunday uh, reached a milestone when Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and his wife Gurusharan Kaur launched the country's first indigenous nuclear-powered submarine INS Haryanth for sea trials. Kaur broke a coconut and performed a puja uh, when sh which she unveiled at a plague naming ceremony of a 112 meter long submarine. I name it INS Arihanth. All the best to the submarine, she said. Declaring that India has achieved a historic milestone in the country's defensive preparedness with the launch of the submarine, the Prime Minister said, We don't have any aggressive designs, nor we have to, sorry, nor do we seek to threaten anyone. We seek an in, in external environment in our region and beyond that is conducive to our peace development and protection of our value systems. That's all the Prime Minister had to say about it. Okay? Uh, let's move on to another update. It says that Jacob, uh, Jacob Barge installs offshore wind turbines. Uh, Netherlands-based Jacob Barge new build Monohull Jacob platform JB114 has completed the installation of the first German offshore wind turbine. The JB114 during the installation of the first offshore wind turbine in German waters. Uh, J the JB114 and her sister vessel JB115 were both built at Dry Docks World Naninda in, in Batam, Indonesia. So both Jacobs will be working on the construction of the Alpha Ventus wind farm this year. Okay. Moving on, I have some drudging news. Uh, the Nassau Harbour Port uh, Improvement Project is being carried out to accommodate the next generation of mega cruise ships, which are scheduled to begin calling at Nassau in mid-December 2009. The project consists of dredging to be provide to provide a wider approach to channel Nassau. Um, it says here the project consists of dredging to provide a wider approach channel to Nassau Harbour and to lengthen the cruise ship turning basin resulting in 1.9 million cubic yards of materials being dredged. The material being removed is a valuable resource capable of being used in future on government projects and will therefore be stockpiled at the Arawa K. Okay. The next update is Gulf of Aden counter piracy discussion. Leaders from three of the major task Forces operating in the Gulf of Aden made, met abroad the Spanish warship Numancia at sea. Uh, it says that uh, the counter piracy marit maritime forces met to discuss coalition counter piracy operations off the coast of Somalia. Although the three combined task forces belong to different organizations and have different mandates. We all aim for the same goal, which is the deter, disrupt and suppress piracy in very close coordination and cooperation, says Turkish Rear Admin Kanabena, Commander CTF-151. Okay. Some dredging news from U.S. The new owner of Falmouth Docks in Cornwall says it's committed to plan to dredge the harbor to allow cruise ships to moor. Plans to dredge the docks to allow bigger ships to moor and the backing of the former dock owners and the regional development agency, the Bailey Group, took control of ANP Falmouth last week for the dredging purpose. Okay. The next update is fluctuating oil prices confound bunker buyers. It says that volatile, volatile oil prices continue to confound many analysts with conflicting reports on second half trends adding extra uncertainty and further question marks for those seeking to hedge bunker prices. At Singapore, Singapore prices for fuel shot up on Friday, last Friday, closing at $431.40 up to $22 on the week, an increase of more than 5%. Over the last two weeks, heavy fuel costs have risen by more than 11%. Meanwhile, mean, meanwhile, Shanghai's average price of $432 for the month so far is up more 
than 53% on the average of $2.81.50 last March. But some oil analysts are predicting that prices may come may come tumbling down over the balance of bringing good news for ship operators. That's really good. The much-awaited seawater desalination plant, the largest in the country with the capacity of 100 mlg, that's million liters per day, coming up at Minjur, about 35 km north of Chennai, has run literally into rough weather after Cyclone Nisha battered coastal Tamil Nadu in November last year. The damage caused by the cyclone has delayed the project implementation. Besides damaging a portion of marine works and has been completed, the cyclone has also left behind a mount of, um, sorry, a mound of metal debris underwater, where huge pipelines are to be laid out to draw water from the sea. So that's a lot of work pending, huh? The next update says that IMO holds Marine Environment Protection Committee meeting says that the International Maritime Organization held a marine environment sorry held a marine environment protection committee meeting uh, between July uh, between uh, the end of the July and during the meeting there were 214 submissions the urgency was due to the upcoming UN con uh, UN conference on climate change scheduled for Copenhagen Copenhagen in December. It is understood that the UN wants shipping included in a new climate change agreement. If the IMO cannot show progress in a new climate change, may lose its responsibility for regulating air pollution from ships. The members of IMO are unanimous in believing that this would be bad for the industry. However, most of the developing countries want to stick to the principle of common but differentiated but differentiated responsibility for climate change. Okay, I have some updates from the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal Authority, also known as ACP, will soon solicit bids for the fourth and last dry excavation project. The project will be in the final phase in creating an access channel that will link the New Pacific docks with the canal's existing Galliard Cut, the narrow stretch of the Panama Canal. Next update is uh, Kiwis extend date for Northland bids. It says that New Zealand has extended the closing date for the North Northland Basin bid round to 18th of August 2010. The extension will allow participants time to digest new seismic data which will be available in end of 2009 according to a statement posted on the New Zealand Crown Minerals. Energy Minister Jerry Brown, Brownlee first unveiled of the first unveiled the north the Northland minerals the Northland and Rakumara Basin release last December. Six books are up to the grabs in the Northland Basin, three on the continental shelf and uh, shelf and three in intermediate to deep waters. Okay. Some more Panama news. Uh, Grupo Undios, a port de canal led by Spain's Sacker Valhermso construction company, became the virtual winner Wednesday of a three billion contract for the third set of locks for the Panama Canal. Grupo's Unidos, whose other members include Italy's Impreglo, Belgium's Jean de Nol Group, and the Panama's Constura Urbana will get the contract if it meets certain additional requirements and the other two bidders do not challenge the process. Well, that's all we have for you today. Uh, we do thank you for joining us today. Be sure you catch up with us tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye for now.